Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, it's Clay Ramage. Back again with another Goodwill Bins haul, of course, right now that's about all I'm doing are Goodwill Bins hauls. Um, because again, we're in Minnesota in the middle of winter, and, you know, a couple days ago we got a lot of snow, so garage sales aren't happening. Thrift stores are okay, like I mentioned in my last video, and, um, yeah, estate sales, hit or miss. Most of them are online nowadays, there's not too many in person right now, so we go to the Goodwill bins and we find some great stuff. I'm excited about a couple things we found today. Learned something new about one of the items. I didn't even know these were a thing. Oh, so that's good. So let's just get right into it. Um, so where do I start? Let's just start with the most unusual thing that I learned something new today about modern technology. So there were these glasses they're really funky looking they have earpieces you know so you can hear so i'm like okay so these are some sort of an electronic deal with funky looking glasses and what are they so i picked them up and they're not that heavy so what I found out is that these are for parties, concerts, whatever, because you can display a message across the top and it's like an LED scrolling message. So you can go, you know, say something like, let's go Bob or whatever. And it would scroll across the front of these glasses. So you can program them to your phone. It's a Bluetooth application. So something super fancy and hip for the young modern crew. So. I took a risk for a dollar thought it was worth the risk and then the other item I'll get the two electronic items out of the way um, this one really surprised me that it was in the bins so I was 99% sure it probably would not work but I plugged it in when I got here to the shop and guess what it works it works beautifully it is a Bose wave sound machine and Cindy and I love the sound that comes from Bose. This is the AWR1, and these are a $50 to $100 item in working condition, which this, like I say, this one works wonderfully. The clock is ticking away. The radio works. This is not the CD player. This is only the radio. It does have the um, auxiliary port, so you could plug additional items into it. But it is just radio and I am super excited it is quite dirty it needs to be clean but again for a dollar twenty that is some great money and I'm I was all excited <laughs> because I decided I wanted to get out of the electronics I've been picking up electronics over the last year and they've just been piling out here and I was like I just don't want to deal with these because it's too much time effort and energy that I want to spend on testing making sure every feature works on every single one so I found a guy who willingly took all of it um, from me and he bought some records, all of my electronics. And that was such a big relief to get rid of it. So I thought, I'm not buying more electronics. Well, guess what I did? I went and bought more electronics. And if it wasn't a Bose, I wouldn't have bought it. And I might even just keep this one. <laughs> so anyway, so we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But I was excited one way or the other um, for that. Sorry, I'm a little thirsty this morning. Okay. Then the other, speaking of areas that I wasn't going to deal much with, I have this kind of love-hate relationship with men's ties. I love picking them up. I don't like selling them. And I've sold a number of them over the years. But they're a long tail item. So it takes a long time to sell them, typically. So if they're a designer name brand higher end ties then I'll pick them up so I found these two these are both Robert Talbot best of class which is the best ties they make so that's what these two are and what I do is I typically lock them together in a lot of you know three four five ties whatever then this one is a I can never or, or Menegildo Zegna another Italian designer 
higher end, beautiful tie. Then this one, nice green tie, Gucci. This is an authentic Gucci tie. It's got the authentic Gucci uh, logo on the inside lining. Fabulous tie. And, and again, you can tell quality ties just by the feel of them. So I was really surprised that was still in the bins because by the time we got by there, pretty much all the people had been through it, um, especially the clothing people. Then I, this was the first one I actually found. And this is a very vintage tie. Look at the graphics on that. I would say this is probably, it's a cotton tie. I would say this is probably more of a 1940s to 50s tie far as age wise which really surprised me to find it in the bins but it's a great graphic and it's in beautiful condition for the age and you can tell it's handmade it's a little off center on the thing but that's that was very typical so very excited about those ties we spent fifty dollars today Cindy went with me so it was both of us um, we picked up a number of stuff for home but the heavier items which you'll see, uh, we found a whole collection of things um, that I were is five and a half pounds, so it's like eleven dollars I spent on this one lot. But selling one or two of them will easily easily get our money back. Okay, um, and then these are these are the beautiful items. They're two candlesticks, very ornate Hollywood Regency style with the prisms. Now, I am missing two prisms. I dug through the entire bin to the very bottom, did not find them. But these are simple enough prisms that they'll be easy to find. In fact, I used to have some of these. But I don't think I have any at the moment. Actually, I'm missing three now that I look at it. There's one missing from this one too. I thought there was just two. But again, not difficult items to find. So that's why I took the risk on them. Because I'm trying not to get projects. Things that have to that need something to be done to them before I buy them. These are awesome. I do believe because of the quality of these, these are not old, these are 1970. They're dated on the bottom, but they're great items with marble, real marble bases, um, great casting, fabulous detail on those little, not even cherubs, just little guys. So I, I would suspect once I get the prison and get them cleaned up, I could get close to $50 for those two because of the two of them, which was exciting. This was another exciting find just because these little alabaster trinket boxes, um, you know, I see them quite frequently, but never in this seashell design with the little feet on them. I thought this one was fabulous. So pick that little guy up. Again, just a lot of great little items. I found a cribbage board in the original box. It has even has the original instructions in the bottom. And all the pieces are inside the board. We do a lot of cribbage boards at the Pink Elephant. So, And then these, I took a risk on these. I really don't know much about them. But the, I picked up two of them. This is an Argonaut bridge scorekeeper so it says Arg argunat contract bridge score oh i didn't even know a copyright 1932 matthews new york and look at the graphics on the corners isn't that just fabulous it's so 1930s now that i look at it beautiful in the original box that is awesome i haven't looked those up so i'll have to look that one up now this is a newer one than that one, but still an older one. Auto bridge yourself bridge game. It's easy, it's fun, it's smart. So it comes with the book. And then here's the scoreboard. North bids, west bids, east bids, south bids. Dealer south, dealer north, vulnerable. Huh, so yeah. Let me see if there's anything underneath. Oh, then there's, there's, these are the cards that you would place out 
or exchange out depending upon I assume who the dealer is I'm not a bridge player so but another fun item now which leads me into because all of this was in one bin and there was a lot that I didn't pick up but these are what I picked up whole box it says playing cards and that's exactly what they are and I picked up all the ones that were still new sealed so like there's an there were actually two Ireland's so I picked up both of those treasures of the hermitage Beijing look at this bunny these are nice vintage cards there's a squirrel so some of these I may lot up. Some of these I will sell as is. That one. I just sold a set of these. I don't know if you guys remember. Ten bucks sold in a day. Similar uh, design on it. Then there were several. These are the Freedom cards. These are from... I believe these are from... Uh, 52 American Heroes, limited edition, United States. Um, what am I trying to say? The Gulf War. The second Gulf War. Playing cards. And speaking of the Gulf War, there were also these playing cards. Commemorative of the Gulf War as well. There were two decks of those. And then there's some that are... Where is it? There it is. Minnesota local, Ufda and Yabetcha. These are both sayings here in Minnesota. So those will go down to the pink elephant for sure. Then several Route 66 cards. Again, I tried to pick ones that I knew would have an appeal to a certain um, set of people. And then I did pick up some travel cards this is tasmania not many times you see tasmanian cards <laughs> sydney australia st petersburg and it's got cyrillic on the back um and then santa fe i picked these up because i love the graphics on those oh i don't remember grabbing these but the canadian rockies that works, still sealed. These I'm keeping. Portugal! That's right. That's, that's for the family. And then Delta Airlines. The airlines always have a large following for their stuff. So that will be um, going down to the pink elephant too. Because we sold a lot of airline stuff down there for some reason. Alright. So that was our collection of cards. And like I say, there was a whole bunch more. Oh, I'm not completely done actually. I have a couple more couple more vintage cards. Isn't that great? And there's this kind of vintage scene. And then last but not least were these. These are bridge cards. Congress bridge cards. Um, and these are kind of mixed together, but there's two different designs in here. Let me. These are actually open pack, but I got these. Um, the case just folds open like that. I'll hold up the cards for easy viewing. These have been played with, but they just I just like the graphics on them. So grab those. All right, so that's all the playing cards. I'm trying to get all this stuff over here. Picked up a few pieces of dollhouse furniture, this little kitchen, sink stove, and the doors open. And it's got actual plumbing in the bottom. Isn't that great? Love that. Then a little kitchen table, but we only found one chair. I guess it's for a single person. Picked up this tiny needlepoint kit. I'll have to try to get that sticker off the front without ripping the plastic. It's still brand new. It's a stitch and frame. Looks like little hearts. And we I found these. These are awesome. They're they're saw blades. But still in the original pack. Those are great. These are probably, again, I would say these are probably 1940s based on the just the graphics of the package. And I found these two wood kits. 
There's a log cabin kit and the stagecoach kit. Now what I love about these are these are from North Platte, Nebraska. And being a native Nebraskan originally, I had to get it. <gasps> nice connection. All right. Found these two wooden painted roses. They're wall hangings. So there's the little hooks to hang them. I believe somebody handmade these from just from looking at them. But they're beautifully done. These would be great decoration for the wall. I really like them. And then I also found this fish. Again, hand painted. I didn't see a signature or anything on it. Didn't really look though. Now that I'm looking, still don't see one. But Minnesota is big for fishing. So this will go down to the pink elephant. I think it should do just fine down there. And I found this stylized owl. He's most unique, hand carved. Again, no um, identifying marks of the carver. And also this stone owl, beautiful little marble owl with glass eyes. So a couple owls, owls are always collectible. Not sure where I'm gonna put those yet. All right. Then we found some buttons. <laughs> this one is Good Neighbors, Good Times from 1991, the St. Paul Winter Carnival, 91. That's when Cindy and I got married, that's 30 years old. Then I found these two buttons. This one is commemorating the 50th anniversary of D-Day. And this one again is a World War II commemorative button. I don't believe this this dates from World War II. It's a later item, but I just thought those were great. Look at the size of that. It's a huge button. I thought they were great. All right, then we picked up some books. I'm going to get into those now. This I remember by Eleanor Roosevelt. It's This book is in okay condition. It's from 1949. It is a first edition. Um, oh, I didn't look at the back. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have picked it up, but the back's kind of trashed a little bit, but that's okay. It's not easy being a bunny. <laughs> um, oh, I didn't look at this one very closely. Either. I just grabbed, unfortunately, today. It is a little broken, the binding, but that's all right. I love the graphics on this. Asher Sizemore's and Little Jimmy's Songs of the Soil. Isn't that awesome? This is a little music book. It's a Christian song book, actually. Home on the Range, Jesus Loves Me. A lot of great old songs. 1937. I was going to say 1940, so not too far off. And I also found this Brahms piano music. Actually, piano and violin. I did find a, a one piece of artwork. It's actually... What is it? It's a litho. Black and white. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Love the picture. It's a metal frame painted white and gold. A little chippy now. But it's a great, great feel. This is 1920s, I would say. This one this is from. So, paid a dollar for that. Then, I found... Cindy and I dug and dug and dug until we found all six of them. And that's these McGuffey's Eclectic Reader. So they have one for basically first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, and sixth grade. Now they might have a seventh grade, I don't know. But what I think is fun is if you look at the bindings, each consecutive year, the book gets thicker. <laughs> and the bindings are different. This one's, the first year is very plain, simple. Second has an embossed spine. 
and the next three years are the gold foil. So I was excited to find all six of these. I have no idea their value, but I was excited to find them to be able to sell them as a set. But, and I also just love the graphics on the cover. And the look at the back. The back is just as awesome. Well, it's just $18 for the set. So there is a book plate in there. Somebody put their name on it. McGuffey's first eclectic reader. Revised edition. Copyright 1879. Copyright 1896. Copyright 1907 and 1920 by H.H. H. Vail, which is what this edition is. Manufactured first edition revised. So, first reader starts with the alphabet, and then gives different stories and pictures. And then it gives you the pronunciation of the different words as well. These are just great little books. So, love those. Oh, and then I got one more book. I actually picked this up for a friend of mine. She wanted to know if I found any psychology books. She's interested in them. And this one confuses me. And I'll show you why. So it says here, you notice, Basic Writings of C.G. Young. But look. It's upside down from where the book is. The cover is right, because there's the symbol. But the book was placed in it upside down. Quite interesting. I might have to do some more research on that. And this edition, let's see, let's see, I'm confused. Somebody wrote their name in here from 1979. And this is the original copyright, 1938. Um, this particular one is copyright, 1959. And then somebody bought this one in 1979. So this is a later edition, but interesting that it's upside down. Anyway, is that everything, guys? I think that is pretty much everything we got today that I was going to show you. Um, I did pick up a bunch of shipping supplies like bubble wrap, tissue paper stuff like that but and then we picked up some stuff for our daughter in her classroom but anyway hope you guys enjoyed catch you next time